In this video, we're going to be taking a look at decimal operations. You will need to turn your Go Math book to page 231, and I want you to get out your math journal and pencil to work through this prob these problems. And the essential question that we are going to answer is how to use the strategy work backwards to solve multi-step decimal problems. Now let's take a look at this problem on page 231. It says Carson spent $15.99 for two books and three pens. The books cost $4.95 each and a sales tax was $1.22. Carson also used a coupon for 50 cents off his purchase. If each pen had the same cost, how much did each pen cost? Now, first thing, first few things that we need to do, we need to figure out what we need to find, what information will you need to use, and also how you will use the information. So you can see the answers to each of these three questions right here on my screen. I want you to pause the video and write these down right on page 231 in the read the problem section and then we'll go on to solving the problem. <clears throat> Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a flow chart to show the information and then using inverse operations we're going to work backwards to solve. Okay, now we have all of our information. Okay, so Carson spent $15.99 for two books and three pens. Each book cost $4.95 and tax was $1.00. 22 and he also used a coupon for 50 cents off. So first of all, three times the cost of each pen. So we're going to take that plus cost of two books. Now we know the cost of cost of um, the books. Each book costs four dollars and ninety-five cents. So we'll write that in our flow chart plus the amount of tax. Now we know that the amount of tax was a dollar twenty-two. So let's write that in your flow chart. Now we're going to minus the coupon. Okay, so subtract that coupon. We'll equal the total amount that was spent, which was $15.99. Okay, so now taking that information, we're going to take the total amount that was spent, and then we're going to add the amount of the coupon, so which was $0.50. Cents. We're going to once again subtract the amount of tax, which is $1.22. We're going to subtract the cost of the two books, which is $4.95. Okay, so we take all that information that we know, because they never told us how much um, each pen costs. Obviously, that's what we're trying to figure out. So we take all that information, we work backwards, okay, so we can see all that. We see the cost of cost of two books not not 495 it's actually 990 okay so we take all that 1599 plus 50 cents minus a dollar 22 minus 990 that's going to give me five dollars and 37 cents for the cost of three pens so what we need to do is we need to take that five dollars and 37 cents and we need to divide that by three and that's going to give us a dollar seventy nine. Okay, and then from all that information, we can actually see the cost of each pen was a dollar seventy nine. So you can see we already knew how much was spent, we but we did not know how that how that fifteen dollars and ninety nine cents came about so we needed to figure out take we basically needed to take what we knew to figure out what we did not know so we knew that the cost of two books was four dollars and ninety five cents we knew the tax was a dollar twenty two we knew there was a coupon so we took all that fifteen ninety nine and then we worked backwards eventually come into the answer of five dollars and thirty seven cents Okay, let's take a look at that problem on page 232. It says, last week Vivian spent a total of $20. She spent $9.95 for tickets to the school fair, $5.95 for food, and the rest for two rings that were on sale at the school fair. If each ring had the same cost, how much did each ring cost? So, first of all, what we need to do, we need to figure out 
what we need to find. And let's write this down. We need to find the cost of each ring. What information are we going to use? We're going to write this down in our Go Math books as well. We know that Vivian spent $20. She spent $9.95 for tickets, $5.95 for food, and the rest for two rings. So how we, will we use the information? We're going to work backward from the amount Vivian spent to find the cost of each ring. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the first flow chart to figure everything out. So we have the cost of two rings. So basically we're going to take two times the cost. Okay, and then what we will do, we will add that. We don't know the cost of the two rings just yet though. Okay, so the cost of tickets, we know that she spent $9.95 for tickets, so we'll put $9.95 here. I want you to do this with me in your Go Math books, plus the cost of food. All right, now we know the cost for food was $5.95. Okay, so all of this, okay, so the two rings plus 95 plus 595 is going to actually equal $20. Okay, now does 995 and 595 equal $20? No, it does not. Okay, but we do know that whatever this ring costs basically um, help the difference between 995 plus 995 plus $5.95 in order to get us to $20, okay? So taking what we know, all right, now we're going to create another chart here. Okay, so we have the total spent, okay? So we're going to take this, and I'm just going to move this down, the total spent now, okay, which was $20, and I want you to write this down, the total spent was $20, Okay, and we're going to subtract it from, we're going to subtract the cost of food, which was $5.95. So $5.95. And then also we're going to subtract the cost of the tickets as well, which was $9.95. Excuse me, and then from there, that will give us the cost of the two rings. Okay, so we have this is going to equal, so we take $20, subtract $5.95, and then subtract another $9.95, and that's going to give us $4.10. $4.10, that's the cost of two rings. And so we take that $4.10 and we're going to divide that by 2. Why 2? Because we're trying to figure out how much each ring costs. And there were two rings that were purchased. Okay, so $4.10 divided by 2 is going to give us $2.05. So the cost of each ring was $2.05. So you can see we're taking what we know to figure out what we do not know. Using that flow chart, we're working, we're adding everything together, and then basically we're taking our answer, and then we're working backwards to figure out what we do not know. Okay, let's work through the share and show problem together. And what we have, Hector spent $36.75 for two DVDs with the same cost. The sales tax was $2.15. Hector also used a coupon for $1 office purchase. How much did each DVD cost? Okay, so I want you to copy down this flow chart. What I did is I took the two DVDs, we do not know how much that, that is, added the tax, subtracted the coupon, and we know that that gives us $36.75, which was the total amount spent. So I want you to copy this down, then we'll work through the other flow chart. Okay, so here's the other flow chart. I do want you to copy this down. We have the total amount spent that we already knew, $36.75. We added a coupon to that, which was a dollar. Okay, and then we subtracted $2.15, which was the tax. 
okay and then for the two DVDs thirty five dollars and sixty cents that's how much the cost of two DVDs um, was within the problem so thirty five sixty was the cost and then what we need to do we need to take that thirty five sixty and divide that by two so we can take that and divide it by two you can do that right on your calculator 3560 divided by 2 is going to give you $17.80. Okay, gives us how much each DVD costs. We know 2 costs 3560. We need to take took that number and divided it by 2. Okay, I want you to work through this problem and um, make a flow chart and use the strategy work backward to solve the problems and when you're finished you can press play and I will have the answer for you so I want you to work through this problem and pause the video now okay the answer for this problem is 65 cents okay I want you to work through this problem and when you're finished you can press play and I will have the answer for you so pause the video now Okay, we have 24 for the answer. You can see I had my flow chart. Then I worked backwards using the inverse operations, coming up with the answer of 24. Okay, I want you to work through this test prep problem. When you are finished, you can press play, and I will have the answers for answer for you. So pause the video now. Okay, the answer is letter C. And going over the essential question and answer, how do you use the strategy work backward to solve multi-step decimal problems? You can work backward using a flow chart to find the unknown information. Keep in mind that this just is a strategy that you can use when you are figuring out multi-step decimal problems. If you have any questions about creating flow charts or decimal operations within word problems, please come and see me.